have everybody with us. We shall venture out into the deep now. And uh, for a while today, turn off the television because you're not going to hear anything from TV, I guarantee it. You'll hear nothing on television that will uh, inform you of where we are today. If you'll turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2. Nobody can prove which books of the Bible were written first. Nobody. Forget that. But there's considerable agreement among a lot of people who are Bible students that First and Second Thessalonians probably were some of the earliest books the Apostle Paul wrote. And he wrote these because they, they have bearing on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these books of First and Second Thessalonians were written probably uh, a good bit before Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Now, a big mistake that you'll make is because you take your New Testament look the, and look at the order of the books, you think that's the chronology of the way they were written, and that's not true. Uh, the book of Revelation does come to last to the book of, of the 27, and it is um, uh, commonly accepted to be the last one written somewhere about 90 to 95 A.D., so the canon of Scripture was closed along about that time. But um, the book of uh, First and Second Thessalonians have, has direct bearing on the Second Advent and the mystery that the Apostle Paul revealed to the Church of God about the rapture or the catching away of the saints. And if you'll notice what he says over here in verse number 8, chapter 2, he said, And then shall that wicked be revealed. And notice in my Bible it's capitalized. The reason it's capitalized is because it's personified. In other words, there's an individual, well-known, notorious, that fits this identity. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power. Now note carefully that word power. This is dismissed too quickly and too easily in the Christian church as if it's just part of, the, uh, of his credentials. No, he has real power. Real power. And the Bible says here that uh, even him's coming is after the working with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, isn't that remarkable? Power, signs, and lying wonders? Look at Revelation 13 over here with me. Revelation chapter number 13, verse 1. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea, that's the Mediterranean, and heard a be saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his horns ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet the feet of a bear, his mouth the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his seat, and his authority. Don't let that fly by you. This is something that's real, real power. In a moment of time, he showed him the kingdoms of the world and said, These I have, I can give to whomsoever I will. In a moment of time, what does that mean? Does that mean he showed him in a moment of time kingdoms past, present, and future? Does that mean that he, uh, he was able to show him uh, the kingdoms right before his very eyes and all of their glory, splendor, and power? And the Lord Jesus understood that Satan owned that power. And he's not called the God of this world in a flippant sense in the Bible. Now, if you're conscious of anything, you know that in Norway a terrible tragedy has taken place. Ninety-something, I think Drudge reported this morning, 92 people have been found. They continue to find bodies apparently on this island. This man right here stalked these people. And the reason he stalked them is because he had no fear that anyone would have a weapon and stop him. Amen. Think long and hard on that. Think long and hard on that. The people that obeyed the law are all dead. The lawbreaker murdered them. They had no recourse to defend themselves. They were shot to death. Think about that. But anyway, this man is a uh, young man and here's a photograph of him with his Masonic uh, apparel, his apron and all the rest of it. 
The first reports coming out said that he was a Muslim. They got all that messed up. He is anti-Muslim and professes to be a Christian. He doesn't know the Lord that I know. But uh, the thing is, he's called a right-wing extremist. The media loves tags. They love to tag things. So why do they, they compartmentalize it by doing that. They put it in certain areas. Therefore, if they tag you, they stick you in the same place. See, it's like a mailbox. They put all the mail in, in a... This, this goes to the right, rem, right, uh, right ring, uh, wing extremist, all right? Put him in there, all right? Here's the murderer. He goes in there. Well, Preacher Lawson, he's a right wing extremist. Stick him in there, too. That's the way it works. Amen. But in any event, there's a tie-in here, very possibly, with something bigger than you can imagine. That's never been reported. We'll lay this aside for a moment. But consider the Masonic religion that we've been talking about. And Albert Pike drew up the morals and dogma back in the 1800s and laid the foundation, the basis for what they believe. Now, we talked about the root race theory, and I want to bring you back into that today because that's going to be the springboard that takes us off into a lot of areas. If you remember, I told you the Theosophical Society, and they're still around, they're the ones who uh, produce the, uh, they're part of the UN. They have an office up there in the UN. The Luciferic Initiation or the, the meditation room in the UN is taken care of, controlled by these Luciferians. And uh, they believe in what's called the root race theory. Now this theory was in vogue long before Adolf Hitler ever showed up. Adolf Hitler did not introduce uh, uh, supreme racism or, uh, or, a, uh, or the idea of a supreme race. He didn't do that. No, no, no. He, only, he, he took it and accommodated it to Germany. But in any event, there's seven root races. And the first one are, is the Polarians. And these are, these are ethereal. They're not physical, but they're spirit beings. The second one is Hyperboreans. These are ethereal, spiritual. Then the first one to show up in a spiritual body are the Lemurians. And this, uh, they have a place. They had a third eye in the center of their forehead, according to this uh, doctrine of, uh, you know, the root race theory. Now, you may not think much of that unless you've been listening to what I've said about the occult world. How many of you tied that together? How many of you tied together the fact that in front of the pineal gland, uh, if you reach a certain place or stage in your spiritual development, that you can begin to see without the aid of a physical eye through that third eye, which is in the center of the forehead, behind the pineal gland, which is in the center of the head. And this is tied in, this is tied in directly with Kundalini Yoga. It's tied in directly with what's going on out there in California with Rick Warren when he has his professors or his doctors come up and introduce the people to the Daniel plan. If you're like me, when you get into something, you start digging around in it and find out what it's about. How many of you do that? I mean, if you're going to get on an airplane, you want to know where it's going, right? <laughs> Or just get on for the flight. Who knows where it's going to wind up? You'd be amazed how many people just get on for the flight. <laughs> a lot of people in America like that. We're making good time and we're going. Where are you going? I don't have a clue. But we're getting there. <laughs> but anyway, the third eye that looks through the forehead is a spiritual concept. So, uh, you know, the, what do they call it? The cyclops with one eye? All right. This is the third eye. And this is the ability to see... Uh, through the center of the head. Now I say, preacher, do you believe in all this? Listen, it doesn't make a difference whether I believe in that. I believe the Bible. Amen. But what I'm trying to show you is that there is a foundation and a basis for what they believe. See? And I know that the spirit world's a real world, folks. This is a real world. This is not a make-believe world. And you're dealing with real things. What do you think this man went out and killed 92 people for? He's an intelligent looking man. Look at him. I mean, if you've seen a photograph of him on the web, I'm sure you have. He doesn't look like some uh, Joe Smo down on here on Fifth Avenue. This guy right here, he's, you know, pretty sharp. He's, uh, by the way, he is the he is the classic Aryan. Blonde hair, blue eyes, long sloping forehead, uh, thin nose, all that. Hey, Amen. When you lose your hair, I wonder if you're still an Aryan. I don't know. What, you know. <laughs> Any event, this uh, then the fourth step up. In the root race, now listen carefully, the fourth step is the Atlantean. What's that? That's Atlantis. Plato talked about Atlantis long before the Lord Jesus Christ. Talked about it. Talked about it in the sense that it's a reality. Atlantis, what was it? 
It was a civilization of advanced beings, okay? Advanced. The next one up is the Aryan, and that's Adolf Hitler's. Uh, that's where he was fascinated with the idea of the Aryan in this development, this upward movement of the racial uh, 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 evolution. And uh, by the way, when you ever get around an evolutionist and he starts talking to you about, and he's an evolutionist, he believes that you know how that, there, that the evolution, you know, it always evolves and it's, uh, a bird evolves to have wings and a fish evolves to have gills and all this evolution taking place. Ask him what force or what mind is involved in doing this? Does the bird do it? Or is there something going on that the bird's not even conscious of? He can't answer that. He has no answer to it whatsoever, none. So the Aryan is an intelligent being that is an advanced civilization, that is an advanced uh, uh, evolution in the evolutionary process upward. We're going upward, upward, upward. And so this is what Adolf Hitler said that we need to focus on that. We need to deal with what needs to be done to purify the Aryan race. So. Back here in the country, back here in the United States, before Hitler ever showed up, they'd already been doing that. It's called eugenics. How many's ever heard of eugenics before? Most folks don't realize that the United States of America in the first part of the 1900s was head over heels into eugenics. Head over heels, big time. And uh, the reason for that, of course, was to uh, purify a race. Now, I mentioned to you as I closed out last week about the state of North Carolina. This is nothing against North Carolina. All of them practically probably had something to do with it. I don't have time to do all the research. Tennessee certainly did. But in North Carolina, they had the Eugenics Board of North Carolina. It was an agency of the U.S. state of North Carolina, created in 1933, after the state legislature authorized the practice of eugenics by state officials four years earlier. What is it? It's a matter of sterilization, purification, and you choose, pick and choose, who's going to have children. And what you're trying to do is to breed out the bad characteristics and breed in the good. Well, when this thing first started, folks, they had black folks way, 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 way down here. Way down. And Jews uh, somehow or another wound up at the bottom. And uh, any, any colored races down here at the bottom. The idea was that uh, they might not have said Aryan, but that's what they had in mind, was to breed a superior civilization, to breed out these characteristics. Why'd they do that? They did that because they bought into Charles Darwin, hook, line, and sinker. When, Darwin, when Darwin's thesis of evolution came out, they bought into it that men had evolved into what they are today, and so we want to continue to evolve into a higher state and so forth and so on, and we're going to help him along and help who, whatever's doing this along. And that's the idea. So the bottom line is that there was a definite move to purify and cleanse certain races and get rid of certain races. Now, I mentioned Margaret Sanger to you last week, didn't I? You remember who, who she was? Margaret Sanger? She's the woman who started Planned Parenthood. She was head over heels into eugenics. She was firmly established in her belief of superior races. She called certain people human weeds and used terminology uh, like that constantly. She had a lot of people around her believe the same thing. Planned Parenthood was started by a woman. Now check me out. Check me out. <laughs> check me out. It was started by a woman who, is as, who was as deep into this as anybody could possibly be. So therefore, the foundations, the basis, the beginning of it was the matter of purifying, cleansing, selectable races. Have you wondered about why that Planned Parenthood has shops, you want to call them shops or whatever you like to call them, throughout the black community? The big black, like Memphis, Tennessee, for example, Chicago, places like that. And in these so-called health uh, places that they, off they offer abortion on demand and that Millions and millions of little black babies never see the day, light of day, and it's directly through Planned Parenthood? Put two and two together. It's as quiet as it can be in here today. Check me out. <laughs> I challenge you. Be as the Bereans. Go read for yourself and see if these things are true. Now, 
reason I said all of that is because there's a focus on race, there's a focus on cleansing, there's a focus on depopulation. The global elite want to depopulate this earth and repopulate it with their kind. But now they need so many of you, of the herd, of the peons, that's me and you. They need so many of us to go out and do the menial tasks, the hard labor, the physical labor, so that they can maintain their ultra-elite lifestyle. Somebody's got to plow the ground plant, the ground, plant the food, you know, do these things so that their money is worth something when they want to go out and, and fly in their jets and, and live their jet set lifestyle. You'd be amazed at the vast difference between the lives that they live and the life that you live. And they will not give up the life they live. They're not about to step down to where you live. A man said to me one time, he said, he said, preacher, he said, rich men write the laws. Think about it. Think about that bailout when billions of dollars was handed over to these, to these ultra, to the, to these, uh, 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 these, these, uh, corporations, these money corporations, and then they turned around and handed out million dollar bonuses. Did you get one of them? How many of you got a million dollar bonus from the bailout? They missed us, didn't they? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. They play their hand occasionally. They show their hand, and uh, they have to. Uh, we don't have the time to get into all the signs and symbols today, but I want to show you some things that ties this together. Now, uh, Brother Valance showed me this about face to faith. This is the public school system uh, throughout the world. They have a monopoly on education. You understand that, don't you? They have a monopoly on it. And uh, when they get your children in there, this is uh, Partners for a New Beginning. It's a commitment uh, at the Clinton Global Initiative. Now, Mr. Clinton has become an evangelist. Isn't that amazing? Did you ever thought you'd see the day? Bill Clinton is a missionary evangelist. It's amazing. And he, along with uh, Tony Blair, former prime minister of Great Britain, uh, are, uh, they are, they are committed to this uh, global initiative. And with eight others, including Cisco, Coca-Cola, Intel, ExxonMobil, Brown University, Interfaith Youth Corps, Care, and um, Imagine Nations, and on and on and on the list goes. Bottom line is that they want to come into the public school system and introduce the public and private schools the start of term in several states across the country, including Utah and so forth. The program is accredited by the international this and that. The Face to Global uh, program brings secondary school students together using digital technology, high tech, learn about each other and about the attitude of those of different religions, cultures, and beliefs to global issues such as environment, health, art, poverty, and so forth and so on. What's the idea here? They're evangelizing the kids. They're turning them into global religious citizens. That's the idea. Uh, how many of you, uh, did they bother to ask about this? Did anybody check in with you before they did this? Do you understand that the only thing they bothered to ask you about is whatever they want to control you with? They couldn't care less what you think about anything. That's the bottom line. Whoever thought that Mr. Clinton would have ever become an evangelist? You reckon he got Monica Lewinsky's permission to do that? I don't know. But in any event, there he goes. He's out preaching now. Notice that it has religious, it's religious, religion. Clinton is involved in religion. <laughs> You'd have never got me to believe that, but he is. All right, so now occasionally somebody will show up that will kind of put a lot of things in perspective for you. Now, is there anybody in this house tonight, this morning, that really believes that the government is shooting straight? No. 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 They're not doing it. How many of you really believe in here in this house today that regardless of who goes into office, certain things are not going to change? Whether it's Republican or Democrat, it make a difference. Some things are not going to change. Some minor social issues may, in, you know, visibly change, but major things are not going to change. They're not going to change. You remember George Bush is the one who started the bailouts. Remember that Republican Bush started the bailouts. So Democrat Obama can't be blamed for all of that. But in any event, you know that what's going on is uh, that there is a that there is the, there's the perceived government. Then there's what's called a shadow government. Then when you go on even to a higher tier, you get into the to the people who are really pulling this calling the shots, pulling the strings. You really believe that? I mean, I, you know, well, if you believe that, then you believe in a conspiracy theory. 
And according to the book of Psalms, the Bible says that the kings of the earth have set themselves against. That's conspiracy. In other words, when two come together and begin to agree on something, on an issue, you've got, they are conspiring with each other. That's a conspiracy. All right. Now, how many has ever heard of Ted Gunderson? All right. A few of you have. Most of you haven't. All right. Ted Gunderson is an FBI special agent in charge. Okay. So this is not some fellow down on Hayboy Corner. This is an FBI special agent in charge. Ted Gunderson, according to his website, is in bad shape right now, uh, uh, physically, that he's, he's apparently dying with cancer. And I've never met this gentleman, but some of the things that he says ring clear. Now, a lot of people have tried to discredit him. This is the way it works. If you come out and say something that's not part of the agenda, then if they can't do away with you, they'll do away with your character. Lawyers do that all the time, courtroom. They will discredit you. That's the idea. In plain words, he's a nutball. You know, you can't believe him. He, he's crazy. All right, here's what Ted Gunderson says. Now, get ready. This will shock you. It'll shock you. This man is a retired special agent, FBI, special agent in charge. He's been in Memphis, Dallas, and L.A., Los Angeles. Here's what he says. Based on my research, there's almost 4 million plus practicing Satanists in America today. About 1.5% of the population. That's what he said. Here's what he said. He said there's between 50 and 60,000 human sacrifices a year in this country. That would explain a lot of the missing people, wouldn't it? Little children, they come up missing. The reason for the cover-up because it could identify actors, professional baseball players, professional football players, politicians, and blah, 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 blah. People in high places. The whole terrorist movement is a phony movement. Now, this is what Gunderson said. Now, here's what he said. He said, there are good people in the FBI, police department, CIA, NSA, but there is a covert black operation that's active in this country, very active. And then finally he says, the FBI has been infiltrated by the Illuminati. Now that's where, that's where you ought to be thinking. You ought to be doing some serious thinking. Serious. You ought to be doing some serious thinking. We're talking about a conspiracy, aren't we? Yes, sir. Yeah, right, right. I'm sure they deal with that. Metamoros, Mexico, there, New Mexico, or somewhere down in there on the border. Metamoros is a few years back. They found all these, all these body, all these skeletons buried. It had to do with Santeria, and Santeria is a, it's a, it's a mixture. But it, it, it's a, the bottom line is it's satanic worship, and these were drug dealers, and they could get power by killing people. And it was a real world. It really happened. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you what you look at though, you got to look at it on two levels. You got to look at it on the on the on the let's just say the lower level, like you're talking about, like Metamoris, like these Mexicans, like whoever else, Cubans or whatever, uh, drug dealers. They're trying to tap into Satan to get some power to do what they're doing. That's one thing. But the ruling elite, the people who are running the show, they are religious people, and this is what this is about. It's to tie it together. They are very religious people. Don't kid yourself. There are very, very, very few atheists, real atheists, real atheists. As a matter of fact, I got a thing here, and I'm going to get off on this for just a second because I, I, it, was, it was really quite a thing. Uh, the Soviet Union, uh, they have drilled the deepest well, in their deepest hole, not a well, but a hole in the world. Now, I know some of you have heard of this, and you can get on the web and do some research into it. You'll, you'll find a lot of people laughing their heads off at it. I'm not going to take a position on it, but I'm going, to, I'm going to put it out there for you. I want you to think about it for a minute. 
This is the, uh, uh, the uh, what's the name of this thing? It ought to be on here. Here it is, the cola, the cola borehole. And uh, this hole was dug to a depth of seven miles plus. And when they dug this hole, uh, they lowered a microphone accordingly, uh, uh, apparently down into it, and they heard screams coming out of it. Oh, I didn't stop there. That didn't stop there. Keep reading. Keep reading. Uh, afterward, the crews that would go to that, that hole, it's not a well, it's just a hole in the ground. They go to that hole. Crews that go to that hole said that strange things were happening. Spirits were appearing. All kinds of weird stuff going on. And so uh, that a lot of them refused to go. They wouldn't go there. They wouldn't work there. Even though they needed a job, needed money, they wouldn't go to that hole because there's just too much going on in that hole. And I thought to myself, you know, God's got a sense of humor. An atheistic nation discovering hell. Isn't that something? If that really is. Now, tell me something. Where is hell? All right. Now, now think about it a minute. Do you remember just a few weeks ago when I, I read that letter from Albert Einstein where this fellow uh, posed to him that there's a possibility that the earth has a crust that could shift? You remember that five degrees have been shifted in the North Pole, the magnetic North Pole? That's fact. They had to, they had to set their runways in, in Florida because the North Pole magnetic, there's a difference between true north and magnetic north. The magnetic North Pole has shifted five degrees. That's fact now. That's a fact. All right. And one fellow posited the idea that it's the, the surface of the earth could shift. All right. And do you know what Einstein said? He said, you need to look into it a little further. There may be a possibility. He said, it's possible. That's the man right there that created the, phys the developed the physics to create the atomic bomb was Albert Einstein. I'm not telling you that they've drilled into hell, but I'm telling you this, hell is in the heart of the earth. Amen. I'm telling you that. Amen. I'm telling you that. There's no doubt about it. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Yeah, who, two, right. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that, that's, that's a good perspective on it. Yes, it is. Uh, now, Adolf Hitler was very deep into it. Now, I've, I've covered a lot of ground. Now, what I'm going to have to do is pull it together, see. I'm giving you some over here and some over here and some over here. and Some, some of this stuff seems totally unrelated, but you've got to pull it together. Once you pull it together, it starts making sense. Now, Ted Gunderson says that we have Satanists in this country. He says that we have child traffickers. He says that, he says that, uh, that uh, the Illuminati has infiltrated the FBI. Well, if they've infiltrated the FBI, they've infiltrated the CIA. How many of you ever heard that the CIA intentionally planted drugs in certain communities in the country? You ever heard that? You ever heard that? I first time I heard that, I thought, that I don't believe this stuff. I don't believe this stuff. But then I began to look at the volume of evidence and the stuff that's said and witnesses and testimonies. And I thought to myself, maybe something's going on we don't know about. We do know this. We do know that just in the last, uh, not too long ago, they sold a bunch of weapons to Mexicans, didn't they? They sure did. They broke the law big time to what? Enforce the law? But in any event, uh, Adolf Hitler, now listen carefully. How many of you believe not so much in UFOs, but believe that there's something going on. There have been way too many, there's too much evidence, too much. Our fighters, our boys in World War II, they were, fly, they were flying P-51 Mustangs and, and the rest of them. Our boys used to look out the windows of their, of their fighter aircraft and they'd see things out there. Too many of them testified to it. Too many of them, they call in, they said, something out here. Commercial pilots have looked out the windows of their craft and they've seen things out there. We're talking about men with, with years of experience. They've seen things. People have seen things. All kinds of stuff going. What's a UFO? A UFO is real, but it may not be real like you think it's real. Okay? All right. A spirit is real, but you can't see a spirit. 
Do you believe the spirit world's real? Yes, sir. Of course it is. Adolf Hitler was into the occult. He had a vision. And uh, the occultist of his country had visions. And one of them, his, main, his name was Eichhardt, said that, that in his vision he saw Hitler leading Germany to prosperity into a, into a, new, into a new age. Hitler, he, Hitler embraced occultism. He, he surrounded himself with the occult. All kinds of occult societies grew up in Germany. And to speed forward a little bit here because we're running out of time. Toward the end of the world, uh, uh, end of World War II, a lot of strange things started happening. Strange things started happening. And strange things relating to Germany started happening. People started seeing things. And uh, uh, some folks just pass this off as nothing and others say, well, what's going on here? Well, let me tell you what's going on because I can't get into all the details. The Bible said in Revelation chapter number 13 that the beast received power from Satan, right? Well, the Bible says that when Satan shows up personified in a man, that he's going to deceive the world with all lying wonders and power. He's going to do it. Germany had flying saucers. They had, they had, they had UFOs that nobody could explain. They had stuff that just that people to this day still can't explain it. Now, as far as practical practical uh, science is concerned, they had some of the greatest rocket scientists in the world. They're the ones who came to America after World War II and sent, sent us to the moon. It was the German scientists. That's a fact. And if it's just been a matter of a uh, few things here and there, if Germany, if, if, they'd, if they'd focused on development of that first of the war, the thing might have ended a different way. But in any event, strange things started coming out of Germany. Strange things that affected people, still affect people. They created a society in Germany. It's called A-N-E-N-E-R-B-E. -E 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 -E. Just type that word into the internet. A-H-N-E-N-E-R-B-E. -E -E. Type it in. You'll be amazed at what comes up. This is Aryan power. This is the fifth stage of the upward development of man. What was Adolf Hitler, preacher? He was a dry run for the Illuminati. He was testing the waters. He was, he was putting out, he's like a, when you, when you, when you do a web page, you have a testing server that you load it up onto so folks all over the country don't see where you've messed up. <laughs> you load your web page on a testing server. You can see if it's going to work or not. It's one thing to work on paper. It's something else to work in the real world. Well, that's what they did with Adolf Hitler. He's, he was a test. And I'm going to tell you something. He worked. He worked. His turning point was Operation, what was it, Barbarossa, when he went into Russia and got bogged down just exactly like Napoleon did in the early 1800s. It worked. Uh, now, since I've gotten to the occult, let's take another step into it. How many's heard of Lady Gaga? All right, now, <laughs> you've heard of her. <laughs> Did you know that uh, the young woman over there in Great Britain died yesterday? Uh, Amy uh, Winehouse? Pardon? She was Jewish. 27 years old. They carried her dead body out. That's such a shame. I, I felt sorry for her because she probably never had the truth. I don't know if she ever heard a gospel message. They've turned all the churches in Europe into bingo parlors and used them for everything but the gospel. But in any event, uh, Lady Gaga. Now, there was a time when I was a kid that music was music, okay? Then the Beatles showed up. And when the Beatles first started singing, I want to hold your hand, you know. That was, how many of you remember I want to hold your hand? <laughs> Not a big <laughs> heavy duty song, just simple lyrics. But the Beatles began to get real psychedelic because the psychedelic age started. And their singing changed its focus from just plain, simple love songs into, into this psychedelic world, into this occult world. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Band, I think was the name of one of their albums. It got into this acid. Back then, acid was big, you know, LSD. And things begin to change. And well, I don't know if most of the kids today, I'm sure they don't know it, but America was introduced to the occult, and it's been in it since then. 
Most of the music today is as occult as it can be, to the bone. And ask yourself why. Do you think music has anything to do with the spirit that's in you? Do you know where music started? Music started in heaven. It was originally created to worship God. Music is a powerful medium. Powerful medium. And uh, so, uh, music became occultic. Occultic. Lady Gaga is introducing a whole new generation to the occult world. Bear with me just a little bit. This was taken from the Vigilant Citizen. Now, when I give you a website, it does not mean for a minute that I endorse everything on that website. But this is taken from the Vigilant Citizen. Here's what they say. Symbols rule the world, not words nor laws. You remember what I said about symbols? Do you remember what I said about Washington, D.C.? You remember what I said about the Capitol building built on that plot, that one-acre plot, 666? That's a fact. You remember I told you that the Washington Monument stands 555 feet above ground and beneath the ground? They say it's 111 feet, which would give it a total height from base to top of 666 feet. And the number 666 is everywhere. It's all over the place. But in any event, Lady Gaga has come out now with a musical video, music video, born this way. All right. This is an Illuminati manifesto. This is introducing a whole generation of vulnerable, gullible young people to something that has to do with birth. My, you think birth. Yeah, birth. Remember the seven, remember the seven steps upward? Remember the seven chakras of Kundalini Yoga? Remember when you reach the seventh chakra, the serpent comes up over the top of the head and looks down? You remember that seventh stage when you've reached that point where you become illumined to the universe? You remember that illumination, that enlightenment? That's what Illuminati means. It means the illumined one. That's what Lucifer is. He's the light bearer. He's the one carrying the light. The devil said to, the, to, our, to our parents, said, The Lord doth know that in the day you eat this fruit you shall be as gods, knowing, illuminated, illuminated. You're going to know something that you didn't know. So this quest for knowledge, this wanting to know something, the Bible said, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So here we go. I've got about five, six minutes. I'm going to start you on this. Lady Gaga, now this is the narrative from Vigilant Citizen by, uh, let me see if I've got a name. I don't have a name. But anyway, this I'm reading this directly from their web page. Now, now listen, the internet's full of Lady Gaga. <laughs> This is not the only place you're going to find something about her. Uh, her. Her single born this way introduced the viewers to the birth of a new race. Race, race, remember? Eugenics, race, remember? Purging out the bad races, bringing in the new. Introduced the viewers to the birth of a new race and to a new world. New world. Using intricate imagery and precise narrative, it is a psychedelic trip filled with occult and archetypal symbols telling the story of a cosmic birth and new ideals, however behind its outward message of acceptance. No more sinister message lies embedded in the symbolism of the video. We will look at the underlying meaning of born this way and analyze it, so forth. Lady Gaga is back, y'all. She's got horns on her forehead. She's in space. She's making 90s dance music. And my head just exploded. Whoever watched this. Seriously, Born this way seems to provoke in people two opposite reactions depending on their knowledge of occult symbolism, for it's loaded with occult symbolism. Remember, symbols have meaning. Symbols have power. Symbols are very powerful things. Have you noticed the symbols on your money? It is either, what are you talking, what, what just happened here, or is this is really blatant. In other words, you're sitting there and you're watching Lady Gaga and you don't have a clue what's going on. Or you're watching it and you're saying to yourself, I can't believe that they're this open now and they're in your face with it. The reason is simple. The video contains new strange elements that might confuse viewers, but it also contains symbolism that is extremely ancient. Yes, it's ancient. Although the video is set in a futuristic intergalactic world, it deals with the most primal concept of humanity, motherhood. Here we go. Gaia. Here we go. 
It plays on humans' archetypal fascination and or repulsion towards the act of giving birth. Although the lyrics are born this way about unconditional acceptance with a special focus on homosexuality, the video's scope goes way beyond the subject of sexual orientation. It narrates the birth of a new race within hum uh, humanity. Uh, Laurianne Lor Gibson, the, creator, the creative director of the video, describes this concept. Now listen to this. Listen carefully. Gaga is now giving birth to a human, but to a new race. Gaga is not giving birth to a human, but to a new race within humanity. The symbolism of the video makes it clear that this birth is not natural, but artificially provoked, a twisted, immaculate conception. As is the case of most Lady Gaga videos, the theme of mind control is important in the video. The theme of mind control is important in the video. The theme of mind control is important in the video. The theme of mind control is important in the video. Could one's mind be wasted to the point, controlled to the point that they would kill 92 people? The theme of mind control is involved. The theme of mind control, listen carefully, uh, is important. It is the process through which the metamorphosis will take place. In monarch programming terms, we are witnessing the birth of a new persona within the core personality of humanity. The birth is happening within the minds of people and is visually represented by creepy facial horns. As a man thinketh, so is he, the Bible says. If you have not read previous articles on this, mind control programming is the process through which a handler causes within a subject the birth of a new persona that can be programmed at will through trauma and abuse. It is an actual process used by the CIA, the MK Ultra, and symbolism pertaining to this practice is widely present in popular culture. In the context of the video, the programming does not happen on a single person, but on a mass scale, a new race. That ought to make you shudder, because there's a whole lot more. And I, I'm running out of time. I don't have time to get into it. But let me pull some of it together for you, okay? The Bible says in the book of Revelation 13, he causeth. Put special emphasis on that word causeth. All, both small and great, to receive a mark. And think long and hard on the fact that the whore, the whore, Revelation 17, the, 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 the whore that's associated with the beast, that that whore, the beast will turn on her. All right? You have a world-ruling political entity that is occulted using the religions of men. And that's what's coming to. The religions of men are coming together into an ecumenical movement. Rick Warren out there in California is head of it. He's part of the United Nations. He's part of the CFR. He's been given authority to go out and plant churches, this kind of thing. You see now where evangelist Clinton and evangelist... Uh, uh, what's his name? Blair. These two evangelists are out here preaching in the public school system now. What they're doing is for the masses, the masses, they want the masses to get the mass religion together. They don't care about what you believe. Rome never cared about what you know, anybody believed. Rome didn't mess with their gods. And they, all, they didn't care about that. Just get all the masses together. Keep you happy. Keep the herd calm. But the elite have their religion. And I told you last week how that they feel like they have been born into that religion. It's theirs by heritage. And they are going to control this world. And they are pulling the strings right now to bring this world into a one world government. And they're open now with it like they've never been before. And your minds are being programmed and you don't even realize it. That television set that's before your eyes, if you're not very careful, it will program you. You're in a passive state when you sit in front of a TV. When you're in a passive state, your mind is open to receive. When your mind is in an active state, you're reasoning. You receive some, you reject other. So you sit in front of a television set and you're receiving, receiving, receiving. And don't realize they're not, folks. You're being programmed. And they beat, they'll, they'll beat that thing to death. They keep on and on and on and on and on. How do you believe today that the average American is at the point 
to where if it's fashionable, well, let me have a mark. Let me see. I'd like to have my mark in blue. Yeah, I want my mark bigger than your mark. Well, I like this mark. You, the point is, you see, they don't have a clue what it means. It's just fashionable. That's the way it is. That's why you need to be warned. And you need to warn people. How far do we need to go before the world's ready for the Antichrist? We're here. We'll pick it up again next week now and show you how that, and start pulling some of this together. Because we put a lot out. Man, good night, son. We've, <laughs> we put a lot of stuff out here. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your word. Bless the study of the word. In thy holy name we pray, amen.